Physical exercise has always been regarded as tremendous activity to do when you've got asthma. And traditionally, doctors often recommended children would go swimming. I always find this interesting because if you go to a local swimming pool and if you observe kids in the water, your own children, for example, they'll often throw a diving stick into the pool, the diving stick goes to the bottom of the pool and the kids are diving in afterwards, which invariably is a breath hold. The children then, they are swimming, the water is pressed up against their body, their face is in the water, which is in turn is further restricting their breathing. So swimming can help with asthma because swimming causes you to breathe less air. During the dive, you stop breathing altogether. Carbon dioxide increases in the blood. Carbon dioxide is a bronchodilator. It helps to open up the airways. During the swim itself, the water is pressing against your body and that causes a resistance to your breathing. And this in turn is going to cause you to breathe less, but it can also add an extra load onto the breathing muscles to help strengthen the diaphragm. Yes, of course, during swimming, your breathing is in and out through the mouth, but if you were to measure the volume of air breathed during swimming in comparison to a different sport, such as during running, one breathes less during swimming than they do during running. And breathing less air is the crucial point of the Buteco method. That people with asthma overbreed. That they breathe too hard, they breathe too fast. This is causing a lowering of carbon dioxide from the blood through the lungs, but also the hard and fast breathing through an open mouth often is causing the airways to narrow. The airways cool, the airways dehydrate. We're taking unfiltered air into the lungs, which are going to cause irritation to the airway walls. During physical exercise with asthma, go easy for the first 10 to 15 minutes. It's really important to go at a gentle pace and to warm up. So it's not just about warming the muscles, but it's also preparing the lungs. Exercise induced asthma is pretty common. Even with athletes, it's estimated that about between 20 to 50% of athletes experience exercise-induced bronchoconstriction. We are more likely to have exercise-induced bronchoconstriction when the control pause is less than 20 seconds. So any person who comes in to me, any adult, if they have exercise-induced asthma, if they are a recreational athlete or a competitive athlete, I will always say we need to improve your control pause to above 20 seconds because when your control pause is greater than 20 seconds there is a better match between your ventilation the volume of air that you are breathing and your metabolic needs and that's what we need conversely if somebody has a control pause of say 10 seconds that person is typically breathing harder and faster they will have disproportionate breathlessness during physical exercise and that in turn will cause the airways to constrict so the warm-up period with asthma, you can always practice some breath holds. And these can be really helpful because they further help to open up the airway. So your warm up, you're going at a very light, low intensity of physical exercise. It doesn't matter what the movement is. In this example, I would just use walking. So you're walking at a pace that's light to low and you're breathing in and out through your nose. And after about a minute or so of walking, breathe in and out through your nose and simply hold your nose, hold your breath, for about 10 to 15 paces. Then let go and breathe normally and continue walking with normal breathing for about a minute or two. After a minute or two, repeat the breath hold. So you're walking along and again, take a normal breath in and out through your nose and pinch your nose and hold and hold your breath for 10 to 15 paces. Then revert back to normal breathing. You're continuing walking with normal breathing for a minute or two and do a breath hold again. If you can bring in about six to eight of these relatively easy breath holds into your warm up, they help to open up the airways. As you're holding your breath, nitric oxide is pooling in the nasal airway. You let go, nitric oxide is being brought into your lungs. This causes bronchodilation. As you hold your breath, carbon dioxide increases in the lungs, increases in the blood. This helps with bronchodilation. And then during your physical movement, Increase the intensity of your physical movement while paying attention to your breathing. You will feel when your airways are easier. And as your airways are getting easier due to the progressive warm up, then you can start increasing the intensity. And you will notice that this will have a significant change in terms of exercise induced asthma. So the two things to take into consideration are number one, 
build up your bolt score. Increase your bolt score to above 20 seconds. You're much less likely then to have exercise induced bronchoconstriction. Number two, always go easy for the first 10 to 15 minutes of physical exercise if you're prone to exercise induced bronchoconstriction. And during your warm up, do some breath holds. Bring in about six to eight breath holds during your light physical movements. And this way you can help to open up the airways and increase the, the pace of your physical exercise in tandem with how your airways are feeling. Now, at the end of physical exercise, it's also very important to recover. Because if, for example, you continue breathing hard and fast post-physical exercise, this can also bring on your symptoms of airway narrowing. So it's very important, you're after doing your physical exercise, get your breathing under control. Think about breathing soft, breathing slow, breathing nose. So you're finished your physical exercise, and you're really making a concerted effort to get your breathing under control as quick as you can. That way you can help to avoid exercise-induced bronchoconstriction post-physical exercise. But I will say this, even though it's more challenging to breathe through your nose during physical exercise, there is no comparison with the benefits of nasal breathing during physical exercise in compared to mouth breathing, even if you don't have asthma. Because when you breathe through your nose, you've got a better oxygen uptake in the blood, You've got a better oxygen transfer to the working muscles. You've got better recovery. Your nose is adding an extra load onto the breathing muscles. This is helping to strengthen the diaphragm. By breathing through your nose, you're helping to reduce the body's chemosensitivity to carbon dioxide. Your nose breathing is helping to protect the airways. There is absolutely no comparison the benefits of nose breathing versus mouth breathing during physical exercise. Why do so many people breathe through an open mouth during exercise? It's easier. That's why the air hunger is less. But if you do your physical exercise at an intensity where you can sustain nasal breathing, over time, with continued nasal breathing during exercise, the air hunger diminishes, and then you can do more with less. So it's a great way to train, and it's also a great way to improve your fitness levels. Measure your control pause before you do physical exercise, do your physical exercise, and then measure your control pause about a half an hour after you've finished physical exercise. If you have done your physical exercise with good breathing, in and out through the nose, controlled breathing, your control pause when measured a half an hour after physical exercise, it should be higher. And what's more, your everyday breathing is going to influence your breathing during physical exercise. By improving your everyday breathing patterns, by practicing the Buteco technique, your control pause increases, and as your control pause increases, your breathlessness, your ventilation during physical exercise decreases. This means you can do more with less. In other words, it doesn't take the same degree of ventilation. You can exercise harder and faster with less volume of breathing. So there's a saving there in terms of economy. So if you want to get fit, improve your control pause and practice the Buteco method.